What's going on, everyone? Welcome to EUC Day, Innovation Day. Today, we're going to talk all about cost optimization and usage for your Amazon workspaces. My name is Aaron Hunter. I'm a principal developer advocate with the AWS Trading Certification Team. And with me, we have my good friend, this side. Hey, Aaron, Oscar Legronin here. Thanks for having me. I'm an end user computing solutions architect here at AWS. I primarily work with customers as well as partners to help them adopt our AWS EUC services, as well as work through any sort of issues that they face during that adoption. Sounds like pretty important work there, Asriel, because when you're working with customers who are using end user compute services like Amazon Workspaces, they probably have some pretty heavy fleets or pretty big fleets, a lot of workspaces. Um, if you don't mind sharing, don't tell us who, but what's the biggest fleet that you've seen? Tens of thousands Five of workspaces. workspaces. <laughs> Tens of thousands. Okay. So that seems like a, it, it might be easier to have five workspaces, maybe 50 workspaces and take a look at the usage and cost optimize, but let's, let's be honest, that's more click ops stuff. So how do we use something like infrastructure as code or can we use infrastructure as code to help us, um, automate some of this and and track it is there a report is there anything that we can do <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, cost optimization, especially for my larger customers, is one of the biggest pain points and biggest challenges that I hear. Uh, and so it's a common common conversation, really. And one of the things that I bring up a lot is the Amazon solution we have, actually, the Amazon Workspaces Cost Optimizer. Uh, and so it's, it's really a key tool to be able to actually help these customers at scale optimize their Amazon Workspaces deployments. Yeah, exactly. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think we have a really cool blog or an article that has some architecture diagrams. Do you want to maybe cover that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll pull my screen share up here and I can actually go over the architecture of this solution. Uh, and so if everyone can see my screen here, uh, this is actually a hub and spoke deployment. So you can actually utilize the solution across your entire AWS organization if you wanted to, multi-region across all the regions that Amazon Workspaces lives in. So you only have to deploy this once and you can actually take advantage of this across your entire organization. And that's something that a lot of my larger customers really like because they don't have to deploy this multiple times. So on the, the left-hand side here of the architecture is the hub account. That's going to be where the majority of the, the resources are. And so a couple of the things I want to talk about here, one would be uh, Lambda. And so I've, I imagine a lot of our customers are utilizing Lambda uh, across their, their deployments for other uh, things. But we use Lambda here. Automation or running code in the cloud in AWS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so Lambda in this case is going to actually have a function that registers the account as a spoke account in the DynamoDB table on that hub account. And so when you're utilizing multiple accounts, that's what our Lambda function is going to come in for. Also in the hub account, we're utilizing Amazon EventBridge, and that's going to invoke an elastic container service task every 24 hours. So we're looking at your workspaces fleet every 24 hours to make sure that we're keeping it as customized, cost optimized as possible as often as makes sense. Uh, that ECS task is going to make use of AWS identity and access management and a role in each hub and spoke account. And so you'll see that on both sides here, uh, this IAM role over here. Over on the, the right-hand side, right? Yeah, under the spoke account, that's okay. right. Perfect. Now, the, the ECS task, what that's going to do, it's going to pull AWS directory service to gather a list of all your directories registered with Amazon Workspaces in a specific AWS region. We'll talk a little bit more about these directories later and how that comes into play, uh, but that's really how we're gonna be identifying where these workspaces live, what they are, and the regions that they're in is by the directory. Cool. Now, after the, yeah, after the task has identified the directory, what it's gonna do is it's gonna check the total usage for each workspace that's on an hourly billing model. If the workspace has met that usage threshold for the month, it'll actually convert, if you want it to, that individual workspace to the monthly billing option. Because there are two different options. There's hourly billing and then monthly billing. So what's the main advantage? Like why would someone pick one over the other? That's right. So there's two main advantages. The first being cost. The hourly workspaces has a very small monthly flat rate plus another very small hourly charge. Uh, on the other hand, we have our 
monthly build workspaces, those have an instant access, and then it's one flat rate for the entire month. And so the primary differentiator you would need to look at there is if your users are gonna be utilizing their workspace uh, as their main machine. And so if they're gonna be accessing that workspace more than around 80 to 85 hours a month, that's typically the break even point between the two uh, billing models. And so what okay, this is and... doing is, go ahead. I was just going to ask a question about, let's say you have a user that maybe normally uses their workspace hourly or monthly, one or the other, but um, you want to exclude them from that activity of automatically converting them from hourly or monthly. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And it's something we'll talk about a little bit more when we're going through the deployment of the solution. But you could utilize uh, AWS tags for that. And there's a tag called skip underscore convert that you can apply to the workspace. And that'll tell the solution here, hey, I still want you to monitor and report to me how many hours this workspace is being utilized. But I don't want you to switch or change any of the running mode or the configuration on that workspace. And so for those okay. users that, yeah, you may not want to make those automatic adjustments, you can opt out. You mentioned like, we're gonna cover it later, cover it later. I'm so excited to dig even deeper into this and like see you do it. Um, when are we gonna see that demo? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just as excited to show it to you too. Why don't we go ahead and just jump to that demo? Cool. So let's go ahead over here and take a look at the Amazon Workspaces console. So for those of you that already have Amazon Workspaces deployments, this is probably very familiar to you. For those that, that might not have, a, a, have a chance to deploy workspaces yet, this might be new. Uh, there's just two quick things I wanna talk about here. On the left-hand side is the directories and the workspaces. So if I click on the directories, this is gonna be, as I mentioned, how we identify where these workspaces are. And so when we get into the reporting, the directory ID is gonna be really key. And so we'll come to that later. The other piece is the workspaces. And of course, these are gonna be what your users are using and then the tags that you can apply per workspace. So let's go ahead and, and walk you through how this gets deployed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my build account because I already have this deployed in my main account. And so I wanna walk you through deploying this from scratch an account that doesn't have this solution deployed before. Now the, the easiest way to, to get this set up is actually if you go to our solutions page for the solution itself, down on the bottom right-hand side of the page, there's a launch in the AWS console button. If you click on that, it's gonna go ahead and take you to our service called CloudFormation, and it's gonna have a template preloaded. And I'll pop that in here in a second. What that template has is the instructions that tells CloudFormation what it needs to spin up and to configure for this solution. So what we need to first do is specify a stack for the cost optimizer. I'm just gonna call it Workspaces Cost Optimizer so I know what it is later. But you can name it anything. It doesn't have to be yeah. that. Yeah, okay. definitely. You could name it whatever you want. I recommend something that, that you'll recognize, um, but you can name it whatever you want. I've just picked that here. The next thing you need to do is decide if, if you wanna use a new or existing VPC for uh, the Fargate deployment. Now the default is gonna be to create brand new resources, but you can also choose no. If you do choose no, you'll need to specify the subnets for the first and second subnet, as well as a valid security group ID for the ECS task. And now for the friends, all, all, for all of our friends watching live, we're talking about Amazon workspaces, but we've mentioned a couple other services like Fargate and ECS. So ECS is our elastic container service. It's an orchestration service to allow you to essentially launch EC2 instances, or in this case, we're not using EC2 instances. Fargate is the serverless compute layer under ECS. So if you're confused, I hope that helps, but let's go back to workspaces. Yeah, so uh, in, in this configuration, we're gonna go ahead and, and follow with the defaults. One thing to keep in mind here, if you are following the defaults and creating that new VPC, this section here on those new VPC settings, and this is gonna be important if you already have a an Amazon AWS account deployed with VPCs and services and perhaps connected to your on-premises environment, because you need to make sure that these IP addresses don't conflict with anything that exists in your network today. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're going through this. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as default, but just double check that. 
The, the next thing that's important here is the launch in dry run mode as a testing parameter. What this will do is it's going to tell the solution to still generate the logs of what it would do if it was actually running, but it's not going to actually make any of those changes. So you, you can leave this in dry run mode, get it set up, and maybe look at what it's going to do for the first couple of months before flipping that to a, no, I want to actually launch this in full on mode and let it make those That's changes for me. That, that's pretty key. So not only can we choose like certain workspaces or workstations uh, to convert from hourly to monthly using tags, but you can also select a dry run period and then monitor what's happening before you actually take action. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that's very, that comes up often with our customers. They want to make sure that this automated tool, because they may not be familiar with it, is making changes on their account without them being aware of what it's doing. So this gives them that opportunity to get a look at what it might do without it actually making any changes. Would you say that falls in its own layer of observability as well? <laughs> Talking DevOps here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> this tool is pretty complex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Yeah, so the next cool thing also is to simulate end of month cleanup option. So this tool is typically only going to be making changes to that billing mode near the end of the month, or if the user is already reaching over that break even point in the middle of the month. So what you could do is you can say, hey, look, I want to look and see what's actually going to happen at the end of the month. And so you can change that from simulate end of, the, simulate end of month cleanup from no to yes. Uh, the log level we'll just leave as default. What's important here is, and I'm going to leave this as default, you can customize this if you'd like, but the pricing parameters. So we talked a little bit about the differences between the always on or the monthly billing mode and the auto stop or the hourly billing mode. We've gone ahead and done the calculations for you for each specific workspace's bundle type, but the numbers here are essentially about the break even point between the two running modes. If you wanted to customize that, you can, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as default. The next thing is going to be the AWS regions, which the solution will scan. If you don't want to scan all regions or want to specify just one region, like US East 1, you could go ahead and type that in here. In our case, I'm going to leave this blank because I want it to scan all regions. Our latest feature for the service is terminate workspaces question, not used. Sorry, a question on yeah. the region section. Not sure if you know the answer. If you don't, it's OK. But is, will that include only the regions that the account or accounts have opted in? Yeah, that's a good question. I need to double check on that and see if it's going to just scan the regions that the workspaces are in or even regions that aren't yet opted in on that account. Cool. While we're doing that, we'll see if we can get an answer in the chat. So uh, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. So our, our most recent update to this feature has been the terminate unused workspaces. And that was a pretty common request from our customers of, hey, if so, we've got workspaces deployed, but we're not using them or users aren't utilizing them, we don't want to keep paying them, even if we're just paying that small hourly or the small monthly rate for those hourly workspaces. So we introduced an option to allow you to terminate those workspaces automatically. There's also, of course, a dry run here too. So you can take a look at that before it makes any changes. One thing to note here, if you do turn terminate workspaces not used for a month to yes, you want to make sure that you have simulate end of month cleanup to no, or it's going to automatically start uh, taking into effect and potentially could delete some of those workspaces. So just double check that not and pay good. attention to it. Yeah. Definitely double check that because if that's a running workspace that you need, what happens once you've terminated it? Can you get it back? No, you can't. Uh, that workspace is gone for good. Hopefully you have a snapshot at least. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. We can have a whole separate conversation on backup strategies uh, for Amazon <laughs> <Yeah>. workspaces. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, so you could also set the number of months if you wanted it. So maybe you want more than one month. You want to wait three months of non-use. You can definitely change the configuration here as well. And then I did mention it was a hub and spoke deployment. This is for the hub account. If you do have multiple accounts that you're going to deploy this into, you would put your organization ID here. And then if you've got uh, an, a different account ID of the management account for the organization, you can also specify that here. So now that we've got everything set up and configured, I'll go ahead and click next. Um, so, oh, you got an I just error. need to change what's my, going, my here? title here. Yeah, so uh, CloudFormation can actually contain spaces in the name. It cannot. So I need to, no, it cannot. Yeah, so CloudFormation okay. stack names, uh, they can only contain letters, numbers, and dashes, and I put spaces in there. 
and it's giving you a warning at the very top just telling you like hey you did something wrong and it's kind of like hinting you got some spaces right so let's see if it works now uh left the trailing space let's try that one more time there we go Cool. So if you want to specify tags for this stack, you can do so here. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as default and then go ahead and click Next. This will be the page where you verify everything that you said is correct. So it'll specify the template URL that you put in there. And this is the cost optimizer solution as well as giving you that version number of the solution in case you wanted to just double check and make sure it's the latest version. The stack name, as well as all of the parameters that we just specified during setup. If all that looks good, and you continue on to the bottom. Looks good to me. You, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're yeah. asking, but it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll need to acknowledge that CloudFormation might create IAM resources with custom names. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit submit. And typically, uh, this takes about five to 10 minutes or so to fully deploy. Uh, just from talking to my customers and deploying it in my own accounts. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and... Do we, do we have that time now? I don't think we have that amount of time uh, to wait five or 10 minutes as real. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a while. So what, what I'd like to do is go ahead and jump back to my other account where I've actually got the solution already deployed and show you what it looks like there. Are you doing the cooking show method for us right now? You got a pie in the oven already, Azriel? What's... Oh, yeah, mm, the... hi. It's almost about time to eat the cookies. Hey, everyone is watching, let us know in the chat what's your favorite pie flavor. <laughs> While we're waiting for those answers, Azrael, what's your favorite pie flavor? Not to distract you from signing in and out of all your different accounts. Yeah, apple pie for me. Gotta go with peach pie, yeah. peach cobbler. Or it's it's September. Um, EUC Innovation Day is September 13th, and we're, we're streaming live right now. But that, that PSL got me. I got to go with pumpkin pie right now. Pumpkin pie. That's a good choice. So right. I've already. Oh, you're in your other account now. Yeah, I'm in my other account. I'm also in uh, Amazon S3, which is our simple storage service. The the tool is going to create an S3 bucket where it's going to put all the logs in, um, and that's something that you could look at. If you were to look at the template, you could see the name of the bucket. Um, but it's typically going to be named Workspaces Cost Optimizer Dash Cost Optimizer Bucket, and then um, a random sequence of numbers and letters after that. I've had this deployed for a couple of years in my account, so you can see the, the, the years here. I'll just go ahead and click on uh, 2023 here, and maybe I'll just go to the end of August and, and pull down that report. And so you can see every day in here, and I'll go in, and I've got it set to, to do look at the dry runs, but you'll see this depending upon your account. And the thing I talked about with the directories being really important, you can see that here, every single one of these files has the account number and then the directory ID. So we need to make sure that you're looking at the file for the directory that you want. That's why you showed us the, the directory region. earlier. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so that's it's pretty key because that's how the tool is identifying everything. Uh, and so this cool. is the one that I wanna look at here. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now this is a CSV file. So if you were to download it, uh, it'll open with Excel. Uh, we can just go ahead and hit save on that. And then we'll just pull that file up. All right, so this is what the file looks like. I do have some uh, workspaces here with a little bit of usage on my account to give you a good idea of what this might look like. Uh, a couple of things I wanna call out. So column A here is gonna be the workspace ID, um, but we also have column H, which actually has the username. So you can identify that back to the specific user without having to run other like queries. You have a yeah. Linux. You have a, a Linux user, a graphics user. You have an Asriel user. You have a U. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I've got all sorts of uh, test users here in my demo environment, um, and so you can you can identify these really easily without having to go back and work back looking at the workspaces ID and, and figuring that all out. What is column D? It says change reported. Yeah, that so that's this. Okay. Yeah, th that's very important. That's one of the well, the main feature of the tool. So what that is looking at, it's looking at the number of billable hours. So how many hours did I use the workspace in the month? Uh, for this specific workspace here, it says I used it 13 hours. The usage thresholds, so that's what we configured in the template of how many hours is break even. And it's looking at the difference between the two. So 13 is less than 83. So it's saying, hey, uh, we should change this workspace to hourly in order to be the most cost effective. 
No, okay. some of these here. So if you look at this one that I used 120 hours in August, well, that's more. So it's saying, hey, it's already a monthly workspace. We're not going to change that. It's it's in the most cost optimized state. Got it. And I'm sorry if you've already covered this or you're going to cover this, but quick question between columns B and C. It says bill per hours and the usage threshold. How do we set the usage threshold? Is that something that we set or the system sets it? Yeah, so you can customize that if you'd like. We've gone ahead and, and done some math for you to figure out how many hours is the break-even point between those two running modes. Uh, if you did want to change that, that would be on the CloudFormation template. You can edit those parameters and put in new new values, and then it'll update on the next run of the tool. I am so thankful the system and the tool is doing all the math for me because I can't carry ones to, to save my life. Like, it is insane. I the one all the math emojis are hitting me in the face right now <laughs> yeah there's quite a lot going on here one uh, one other thing i really want to just quickly talk about is the tags if you do have tags on these workspaces for example if you're going to report back on workspaces based on uh, maybe cost center like finance versus um i don't know hr or something like that you can see that here in the tags as well so if you wanted to do some quick filtering on this report you could do so uh, that way without having to look at specific users that's really cool. It's pretty, it seems like it's pretty powerful. So I'm keeping a real close eye on the time here. We have about eight minutes left or so. Um, is there any kind of additional monitoring that we can add into this? So we have the 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 solution deployed using IAC or, or CloudFormation. And then now we have this cool report that says like, hey, I did stuff or I didn't do stuff. But how do we monitor beyond what we've seen? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked. We have an additional tool here that I, I want to talk about. See if we get this pulled up. So this is part of our cloud intelligence dashboards, and this is an example dashboard uh, for the end user computing service specifically that you can build and configure on your accounts. And it's really going to give you a lot more data than the just the workspaces cost optimizer by itself. We're not going to go through the the whole thing, but there are a couple of different columns or, or graphs here that I want to want to talk you through. The first one we work see these pretty colors, and I'm like, ooh, pretty colors. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so I mean, definitely. I, that's the one nice thing is that it's color coded to kind of help uh, help you identify between the different values here. So the workspace is spent per account. And so this is just pulling the top 10 accounts. We've only got three on our, our demo environment here. Um, but you can look across your accounts within your whole organization and pull out which accounts have the most spend. You can also look at the running mode and see how that breakdown is. And it'll even go by account as well if you wanted to get to that level of detail. And the running mode being always on, so we're never going to shut it off. Um, or what does it say? Uh, charged? It's kind of blurry on changed. my end. Changed. Oh, changed. Okay, so we changed. We did something. We changed it from hourly to monthly, maybe? Yeah. So that's saying, hey, how many workspaces were changed in this past month between the two running modes? And then auto stop, that means detecting when there's activity on the Amazon workspace and then automatically stopping it when there's no activity over a certain period of time. Exactly. And the default period of time for that is an hour, but you can customize that all the way up to 48 hours if you wanted to. That's pretty cool. So you can say one hour of no activity or up to two, 48 hours, two days of no activity before it goes into a stopping pattern. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible some of our users, maybe you've got a user that wants to leave a job running overnight, but they're not actually actively at the keyboard. Uh, so you could say, hey, even though they're not there, maybe they've got a task running that's taking some processing uh, power, okay. and it'll be ready for them in the morning, and you don't want it to shut off overnight. You run your work on a Friday night and go home. I see what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try All right, so... Not so we scroll down, weekends, we... but... <laughs> <laughs> so you scroll down and then we see there's more colors and stuff that, but now it's stacked. What are we looking at here? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're looking at spend per region. So before we were looking at spend per account, now we've broken it down per region. So you could really drill into the data and see which regions have the most spend uh, across all of your accounts. And so if I just highlight one here, so we could see in July in our AP South one region, uh, we spent almost $3,600 on workspaces. And so you can look between regions and see what that looks like. And next to that, you can also look at how many workspaces you have in each of those regions over time. And you can correlate that back to the cost. That is pretty slick. So we just covered 
uh, the cost optimi cost optimizer tool through uh, CloudFormation, so you can launch the template, configure it, do all the parameters, use tags and stuff. And then you also have the option to actually let me do this. I'm gonna drop your screen out for a second while we do this recap. So we also have the option to review what's been done, uh, we'll review the changes. We have a really cool CSV or Excel spreadsheet that we can review and do some fun pivot tables, I'm guessing. <laughs> and we have this, this really neat dashboard that displays all of it for us in a very visual way, because if you're like me, you like colors and you can't do the math. So thank you for doing all the work for me. Now, for people who want to maybe just get started with Amazon Workspaces, uh, or maybe dive a little bit deeper, we do have a couple options for you. But first, I'll say thank you, Azriel, for the walkthrough. It was wonderful. Thank everyone in the chat. Let Azriel know he did a great job. Throw your favorite emoji or something. Throw, throw all the heart emojis. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to pull up this other page here. So if you go to uh, skillbuilder.aws, actually, you know what? I'll do you one better. We'll drop some of these links in the chat. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into AWS, you can go ahead and do that, or specifically Amazon Workspaces. So we have an Amazon Workspaces primer course. You can see about the course. You can see the materials and then also additional information. But we don't stop there. We have also the uh, Amazon Workspaces deep dive. The primer gets you started talks about things that Azrael mentioned. The deep dive goes a little bit deeper into that over a couple hours. And then we have launching a workspace. Azrael did not mention launching a workspace, didn't show you that, just showed you how to monitor and cost optimize based on usage patterns for your Amazon Workspaces fleets and the tens of thousands like you mentioned. And last but not least, we have managing your, work, managing your workspaces, adding or removing users, modifying the running mode of a workspace. We did cover that slightly today. And then also rebooting a workspace and restoring or rebuilding. This is part of the backup patterns and the strategies of how to uh, recover from some kind of disastrous environment or a disastrous event. Now, I do want to say one more time, Azrael, thank you so much for working with us today and showing us all the things. Do you have any final words for our friends who are watching live on EUC Innovation Day? Yeah, thanks for having me. And I think coming up next, we've got so, a bunch of more cool presentations about workspaces and the workspaces family of services. So I'd say definitely stay tuned and watch the the rest of the presentations we've got today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Azriel. Thank you so much to all of our friends watching live. Stay tuned for more from EUC Innovation Day live with AWS On Air.